Good morning. There are three things I would like for us to do together. The first is to look at where we have been. That is, where have we been in these daily chats so far? Each day, where have we been? The second is to look at where we are today. And we are to do that for this reason. Here's the third thing I would like for us to look at today. We're going to look at where we have been, then look at where we are today, so that we can see where we have been going. And the reason is, these chats this week, as you look at all of them as a whole, they're connected. They're not separate from each other. And I just, I looked at that this morning, I thought, how exciting is that, how God has worked and how God has led us through this week together. So let's, uh, let's look at where we have been. Monday, you can basically sum up Monday this way, our daily need. And as Christians, our daily need is God's word. It is uh, crucial, critical, whatever word you want to use. I, I'm thinking about the word needed. It is absolutely needed that I be in God's word every day. My advice to you is to start off your day that way. Uh, I, and my, I say that because it's helpful for me. But I, I think, too, it's good to start off your day that way so that you are equipped than to go throughout your day with whatever you're going to face, with whatever opportunity God opens up for you. It's good to begin your day in God's word so that you are prepared for the rest of your day. And involved, what's involved in uh, starting off your day like that or needing God's word every day is this, reading God's word. And as you read God's word, you're thinking through God's word. And as you think through God's word, you are looking for something to hold on to for the day. You're looking for some verse. You're looking for something God is going to say that you are going to remember, you're going to write down, you're going to put into your pocket, and you're going to hold on to that as you go throughout your day. So it's good to have a plan. It's good to know when you wake up each day what you're going to read, what you're going to think upon. And as you do that, you're going to get surprised by what God has to say to you that's exactly what you need to hold on to for the day. So there, Monday, our daily need. And our daily need is God's word. Tuesday, we looked at this, um, doing God's will. And where do we find God's will? God's will is not lost. It's clear as can be. Where, where do we go to know God's will, to understand it so that we might do it? Well, we go to God's word. In God's word, it is clear. It's spelled out for us. Here is God's will for your life. And sometimes it's super explicit. It starts out like this. This is God's will for you. So as we go throughout God's word each day, what do we end up discovering? We discover what God's will is for my life. So that was Tuesday. Uh, yesterday, we looked at Psalm 56, uh, kind of centered on verse 3, but verse 4 goes with verse 3, and then it gets repeated in Psalm 56, verses 10 and 11. And yesterday was basically, basically this. How do I move from when I am afraid to now I'm not afraid. How do I get there? How do I get to the point of not being afraid? In Psalm 56 verses three and four, are just, you can basically put it that way. When I am afraid, I will not be afraid. Well, how do I get there? And of course, those two verses go something like this, that when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. So I get very active. When I am afraid, I get active. I put my trust in you. And I think it's important to remember, too, uh, when I am afraid, why am I afraid? Well, it's because there's something to fear. I want to stress that again from yesterday. Fear is real. And what there is to fear is real. So when I am afraid, when I am facing something that is real and it's frightening, when I am afraid, I get active. What do I do? I put my trust in you. I put my trust in God. And the psalmist David writes, I trust in God. Well, how does that happen? This is something that is to happen. What, what's the basis for putting my trust in God? Well, David tells us, when I turn to your word, I end up praising you. I find praise as I turn to your word. So again, what do we see stressed yesterday? 
the daily need, how much we need God's word. It's in God's word that I discover why it is I can put my trust in God. And why is that important? For when I am afraid. For when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. I trust in God. For what reason? When his, in his word, I end up praising him. I find, I discover why it is, what it is about God that I know I can put my confidence, I can put my trust in him for today. Yesterday, I just want to share this with you, that after spending time looking at Psalm 56, I then, uh, I went to God and I told him my fear. I've, I've been afraid. I've been afraid all week. If I were to make a list of the things I'm afraid of, at the top of the list is not the coronavirus. Am I concerned about the coronavirus? Yes, I am. I am concerned about it. Uh, the coronavirus is not a hoax. It's real. And people are dying from it. People are suffering from it. It's, uh, it's terrible. It's contagious. And it's serious. Uh, so on my fear list, it's down here. Um, it's not number one. Some things I am afraid of. I'm afraid of snakes. I'm not so much afraid of spiders. If I lived in Australia, I think I would be afraid of spiders because from what I can tell in Australia, the spiders are about as big as your head. Uh, that would scare me. That would actually make me, one, not go to Australia. Two, if I was in Australia, it would make me leave Australia. But I'm really afraid of snakes and snakes of any size. I think snakes are terrible creatures and have no place on this planet. And I know there are people that will argue with what I just said, that they have a place on this planet. Well, their place is not in my place. I want nothing to do with snakes. And no matter what their size is, I freak out. And I want to see them dead. I'm not going to tell you what's at the top of my list. Number one, I told God about it yesterday. And do you know, that was such a relief just to like, it, what it felt like was taking my heart and completely opening it up to him and saying, God, I have to tell you what it is that is really making me afraid. And I would say, this is a fear I have battled oh, for a long time. I don't battle it, battle it every day. But it is a fear that I notice every so often pops up. And it feels like out of nowhere. And uh, I don't know, I would say for over 15 years, I find this fear rising, appearing. And I, I realized yesterday that that fear involves a lack of trust, not a lack of trust in God. I do trust him. But I, that fear, it's, uh, it is something I carry with me. And I'm surprised when it comes up. So I told him all about it yesterday. And I, I told him it's a fear of something happening. And not just a fear of something happening or, or of this particular thing happening. But it's then experiencing it. I don't want it to happen. And I also don't want to experience it. And it was, uh, I felt filled with joy after I told him all about it. And so I told him. I was going to search his word for reasons to not fear this particular something. So I, I love Psalm 56. I've en I enjoyed so much our time together in Psalm 56 that when I am afraid, and when do I get afraid? Well, when there's something to fear, it's legit. And when that happens, I put my trust in you. I trust in God. And the basis for that is spending time with him in his word. It's in his word I discover the reasons or discover the reality of what I have to hold on to so not so to not be afraid. So as you look at Psalm 56 verses 3 and 4, the flow is when I am afraid, I will not be afraid. Well, how do I get to that point? And you're not going to get to that point of not being afraid without God's word. And the result of spending time in God's word is... 
my fear turns into praise. And what happens in that praise? I end up trusting in God. It's pretty exciting. So think through our week, uh, our daily need, Monday. Number two, you just sum it up like this, God's will. And where do I find God's will? In God's word. And number three, how I am to not be afraid when I am afraid. Okay, now today is simply this. Why? Why are we, as Christians, to not be afraid? Why? Yesterday the how, today the why. And for that, uh, we turn to God's word. And what we're going to turn to <clears throat> is Isaiah chapter 41. Now, Isaiah 41 is a long chapter. And what we're going to do, we're just going to read the first 10 verses. And then I would invite you uh, to read the rest of the chapter. Really exciting. I love Isaiah 41. And you may be very familiar with it. <clears throat> so let's read verses 1 through 10. And then we're going to pause at the very end and just think through verse 10 together. So here we go. Isaiah 41. This is interesting. It starts with a command. And it's a command from God. Listen to me in silence. Isn't that pretty neat? You know what it reminds me of? Is it Psalm 46, 10? Be still and know that I am God. Isaiah 41, verse 1. It just sounds similar to me. Listen to me in silence. Be interesting to do a study of how much the Bible has to say about listening. Listen to me in silence, O coastlands. Watch what happens. Let the peoples renew their strength. Let them approach, then let them speak. Let us together draw near for judgment. Who stirred up one from the east whom victory meets at every step? He gives up nations before him so that he tramples kings underfoot. He makes them like dust with his sword like driven stubble with his bow. He pursues them and passes on safely by paths his feet have not trod. Who has performed and done this, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first and with the last, I am he. The coastlands have seen and are afraid. The ends of the earth tremble. They have drawn near and come. Everyone helps his neighbor and says to his brother, Be strong! The craftsman strengthens the goldsmith. And he who smooths with the hammer, him who strikes the anvil, saying of the soldering, It is good. And they strengthen it with nails so that it cannot be moved. Verse 8. But you. Something we have noticed in our time together um, at Calvary is that the word but is one of the greatest theological words in all the Bible. But. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen. Now get ready. It, it just moves me to think it's coming. Let's read verse 8 again. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend. What's that do to you to hear that come out of God's mouth? That he would look at a group of people and say, yeah, I've chosen you. Yes, you are the offspring of Abraham. But I declare this to you. You are my friend. I mean, think upon that today. Doesn't it get you kind of excited to God, hear God say to a group of people, you are my friend. You ever feel like you don't have many friends? But here's God saying, my friend. Verse 9. You whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you, and get ready again, and not cast you off. Okay, now here it comes, verse 10. Fear not. 
for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Okay, now look. There's actually two commands, but they're kind of one and the same. Verse 10, well, it's so obvious. What is the command? Fear not. Don't be afraid. Then just underneath it, the next line, be not dismayed. Um, how can we think of dismayed? Maybe growing anxious? Do not grow anxious? Uh, we mentioned in our study in Luke, it's Luke 12, uh, God or Jesus tells his disciples, don't be afraid. And then in the next paragraph, he tells them, don't be anxious. And I think the reason is this, that fear and anxiety are friends. They're pairs. They, they're buddies. They go together. What do you find out when you're afraid? You get anxious. So they're one and the same. So God gives this command, fear not, but then he tells us why. Why should you not be afraid? You who are called God's friend. Look at the word for. What's the word for do for us? It gives a reason. Fear not. Why? For I'm with you. Don't grow anxious. Why? For I am your God. Why? I will strengthen you. Why? I will help you. Why? I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So let's just sum it up like this. Question, why am I to not be afraid? And think about when do I get afraid? When there's something to fear. Yesterday, how do I get to that point to not be afraid? Today, why am I not afraid? Five reasons. God says this. Reason number one, I'm with you. You know how often God reminds people about that? And I think if you go back and look, he most often reminds people that he is with them when they're afraid. Joshua 1 comes to mind. He tells that to Joshua. How, have I not told you, Joshua? I'm with you. And I, you don't see the word fear, but I think you could take away that in that moment that Joshua heard those words, he was afraid. And I think as you go throughout scripture, you find often when God reminds people that he is with them, at that moment, what are they kind of going through? Being afraid. So reason number one, I'm with you. Reason number two, I am your God. Reason number three, I will strengthen you. Meaning there's something to experience. When? When I'm afraid. God's going to strengthen me. Reason number four, I will help you. That means there's something you're going to experience. I will help you. And reason number five, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So those last three reasons, reasons to not be afraid, you're about ready to experience something. So I hope you hold on to that. In moments when you are afraid, why should I not be afraid? Reason number one, God's with me. Reason number two, he is my God. And reasons number three, four, and five, even in this moment, I'm going to experience his strengthening of me, his helping me, and his upholding of me. Now, how else would we know that unless we turn to God each day in his word?